Hey everyone, I'm Ultimate456, you're the Ultimate, and welcome to episode 42 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 1, 2, Reload. It's that time again. It's time for another class trial. So let's get going. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma appears! Hello? Hello, hello? He's multiplied? Long. Nope. Not multiplication. Not multiplication. It just looks that way because of an illusion. I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied. <laughs> Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? Can we just get on the elevator Boy, elevator already? So You're not playing along, along, along. Stop We're not here to play with you. Okay, okay, hey, fine. Hey. Then if everyone's here and ready to go, Please board the pain train or elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? <laughs> Please. Oh, hold on. Uh, I'm not mentally prepared what yet. You'll never be mentally prepared. You you can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your what sins. The heck? I told you already. I didn't do it for serious. Mm. That reminds me. Did you ever find the other costume or the note? Ugh. Um. Well, no. But <laughs> how unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. Uh, no. Hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the court. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to. And I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Hufumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive, and for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Hufumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here. Alright, let's have a quick talk with everyone and we'll jump in. I don't like Monokuma's carefree attitude. Just the worst. Let's hurry up and go so we can make Hiro pay for his crimes. Hmm. Were you listening? Wait till we get to the courtroom to begin your arguing. It would appear the culprit has been confirmed. This trial will be, will be over in no time. Hey. The story begins when we get down there. Uh, it wasn't me. You gotta believe me. Mm, yes, yes. Come on, Big Mac. Let's do it. All right. Let's go. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard... The doors closed on their own, and the steel box began to move. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator doors slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. <laughs> hmm... When I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. It's Only because of you. Ugh. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to Wah -wah? each other? What? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin this trial. Yeah. Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break. Yeah. I'd never hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Yeah, let's save. And that one, and that one. Okay, let's set skills. So we have Tranquility from Sakura. Completely steadies your aim. Effective during the non-stop debate and hangman's gambit. Um, so we're going to activate this and it's going to do exactly what it says. Our aim will no longer sway and we can just target what we need to target, not move, and we're good to go. And then the other one that we got was handiwork. Now, I'll read it here, but it's only going to make sense uh, once we get to this point in the trial. It's actually early on in the trial, so um, you'll see what it means allows you to reload two bullets at once, effective during the bullet time battle. So we're going to activate that as well. And what it does, um, like I said, it's more obvious what it does when we actually get to that point. So I'll just wait until then, and the game will explain it, and I'll further explain it. 
Alright, so, and now, they must confront two murders. Who claimed the lives of Hifumi and Kiyotaka? In this class trial, suspicion builds upon suspicion. Alright, here we go. Let's do it. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, to begin with... We already know who did it. Was that? It was Hiro. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found it in that suit. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Who are you calling a murderer? <laughs> I am sorry to say, Hiro, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Is Hero really the killer? Or... Before anything else, we have to make that clear. Alright, so... This first one is actually quite difficult, um, at least for me, based on the way that I think. Um, and I did not notice it. So we're going to let the entire thing play out and then we're going to try and work Everything it out. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Alright, so we've got your room and blueprints to play with. Compelling evidence that Hero is the killer. Is that really true? So, let's think about this carefully. They believe that because of these blueprints and because of the... I guess blueprints and... Yeah, the, mainly the blu blueprints. The Celeste said something about the, like, the items in his room, but I guess it just falls under blueprints. So she believes, or we believe, that it's Hero because of these blueprints. But there's something that doesn't make sense. If you look at Yasuhiro's message, this is the note that Yasuhiro wrote to get everyone to meet in the dining hall. Meet in the dining hall is all it says. The handwriting is remarkably neat and clear. This handwriting, however, doesn't look anything like Hero's. So it's a contradiction. And that's our ticket. So let's see if we can use that. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough. Bang. No, it's wrong. Also, keep an eye on the the um, reticle and you'll notice that it's not moving at all. Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. We're also talking about Alter Ego in front of Mon Mon Monokuma right now. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints, there's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. I've actually tried to write in a different style. It's re it's like pretty much impossible. So it's a pretty, you know, solid kind of case to make that um, the handwriting... Yeah, you know, use, using the handwriting as evidence because, yeah, it's pretty much impossible to mask your own handwriting. And definitely based on what Sayaka said, it's like you could mask it a little bit, but not that much. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro is innocent as well. What? Then who was in that Robo Justice suit? Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And of course, he passes it off to me. So, who was in the Robo Justice suit? Well, we know the only person that it could have been was Hero, especially based on those cho choices. Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. 
Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Alright, so this one's not too difficult. Things that were used to move Taka's body, they must have been... Well, the top had some blood on it, and we know that Hifumi was nowhere near that top until it was too late. So that's one. There's still one more thing. And the other thing that was used to move Taka's body is the repository dolly. It says, the dolly was found when the body was rediscovered in the repository. This specific dolly has no handles and blood was found on one of its wheels. It is assumed that this is the same dolly that was in the equipment room where Kiyotaka's body was originally discovered. So, that as well. They were a dolly and a tarp, right? What's with the attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the dolly. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible? that it was in the repository all along, and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Wow, I've never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean, but maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the repository, a new element has been added to bullet time battles. Would you like to hear more? Yep, and this is what I was talking about with the skill, so let's see how we go. Let's talk about reloading. Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're going to add one more ingredient to the recipe. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't been really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, just locking on and pressing the triangle button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the square button. Just like locking on, you'll have to press the square button in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember that the square button now has a function along with the X. And I think they meant triangle button there. It will automatically reload at the start of fever time, and your ammo will not decrease. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, you won't have to reload at all. In which case, you can ignore everything I just said. Well then, good luck and have fun. All right, so pretty simple. Just press X to lock onto the um, statements. When they start to expand, press triangle. You had it wrong. And then um, after you press triangle, press square to reload. And we'll re reload two bullets at once um, because of handiwork from Hifumi. 
So the good thing we talked to him just before he died. I cannot agree. Yep, yep, yep. So there's three statements there. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Damn it. Lies will get you nowhere. Be your worst. Okay, screwed up a little bit because the timing is a little hard to I cannot agree. Yet. I cannot agree. This should prove it. This should prove it. So the equipment room blood stain. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. Yeah, so here they say on accident before they said by accident, so that's interesting. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> Jeez, does Celeste really hate me that well, much? anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo-Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? <laughs> I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. If I look at how the body was moved, it'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What do you mean by that? Well, there's one thing, you know, when we found Hero, they were talking a lot about the Robo Justice costume, and there are a few things that came up. So let's see if we can remember what they were. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment <clears throat> room. This is true. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? This is also yeah. true. The culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and mm -hmm. wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. Is that then true? Then push the dolly no problem. So the killer just crouched down and carted the body off to the repository. If you accept everything we just said, then you must realize that whoever was in the suit couldn't possibly be the culprit. Uh, sorry, I, I don't think I realize anything. So if you remember, hang on a sec, the dolly was used to move Taka's body, that much I'm sure of, but would the person inside the suit have been able to push the dolly? As well, we know, no, they wouldn't have. Because when we were when they were in the suit, they couldn't bend over. The Robo Justice costume forced them to stay standing upright. There was no way to bend. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible! Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? There's absolutely no chance that the costume was taken off just to move the body because you can't take it off by yourself. I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make this stupid friggin' thing. 
There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Uh, of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So, it's really, really true that RoboJustice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? Okay, so we're going to go into a different um, part of the trial now, and I think that's a good place to stop because we've finished talking about the bending over and all that. So I'll leave it here. So I want to thank you all for watching episode 42 of Let's Platinum Dung and Romper. One, one, two, reload. <laughs> Voice break, of course. My name is Ultima456. You're the Ultimates. And I'll see you next time.